I'm so happy that Len will be in Parliament. <laughs> okay, I, I do want to say a little story about. Hey, this is what I've got contract now, but I'm like. <laughs> the robots. Um, I just want to talk about diversity and the importance of diversity because right now in Canada, we basically have Stephen Harper making policy. Stephen Harper, one brain. Stephen Harper is a smart man. He's a smart man, but no individual is that smart. Um, social science studies have shown over, over again in different contexts. In the context of women in business or women in science, they show that when you bring women in, when you bring diversity in, a group makes better decisions. And when they look at team-based learning in, in education, where I've been studying uh, methods of, of improving retention, we learn that in a group, the group will make a better decision than the smartest person in the group. Except sometimes the smartest person in the group doesn't get it. They don't realize that. And sometimes the smartest person in the room wants to make all the decisions themselves. So it's no surprise with Stephen Harper taking so much control and focusing all the power in the Prime Minister's office that we've had a string of bad decisions. And it's really frightening. So what we need is we need people to stop mindlessly voting party lines. Not that everybody does that, but too many people do that. And to come out, you guys obviously don't do that. You're out here at a meeting on a horrible night. Um, and if we can get people to pay attention to the candidates and vote for candidates who will stand up in parliament, whatever party they're for, and help, as Elizabeth has described, change the culture in parliament, change the way things are done, so that we will have a situation where we can have that brilliance of a diverse group working together to come up with creative, robust solutions to difficult problems. That's how we get started. The other thing is that as a scientist, I want to bring data back to the decisions. <laughs> so we're going to get those environmental scientists rehired, and we're going to let them tell us what we need to hear so that we can make good decisions. We're going to bring back long-form census. We're going to do all of those things as well. And when we have this functioning parliament, we're going to send Elizabeth May in December to COP21 to be a leader, to represent Canada, to have a team that will set an example for real change. And we know she can do it. <laughs> for controlling carbon emissions. And the fee and dividend, although it's only in a small way, it will also help offset inequality. I think Canadians are under an illusion that inequality is something that the US is a problem down there. Our inequality is atrocious, okay? 86, the, the, the most wealthy 86 families, I'm talking individual families, I'm not talking 86, you know, 86 families have more wealth in Canada than the bottom 11 million of us. That's a pretty intense concentration of wealth. The bottom half of our population, 50% of Can Can Canadians, have only 6% of the wealth in this country. So when we talk about pipelines and we are bombarded with advertising paid by these folks, we need to question this business about these fossil fuel infrastructure projects being necessary for our economy. And when people like Rob and Alan take a closer look for us and report back, just a minute, <laughs> there's only 35 jobs there. Well, that was the, that was anyway, 35 jobs there, and there, Kinder Morgan is paying what a million and a half on average a year in taxes. They're not pouring money into our economy. Uh, it's not a Canadian-owned company. In what way is this good for our economy? It's lining the pockets of these guys up here who are already rich. Pipeline politics is not the left versus the right. Pipeline politics is the wealthy. It's up-down politics. It's not left-right politics. 
So we need to pay attention to that, and we need to not allow issues that matter to us, like affordable housing and a stable pension plan and national child care and health care, student debt, uh, it, it, the list goes on and on. Those things are not to be traded. That's not something that we are using for bargaining chips for destruction of our environment. There's more jobs in clean tech than there are in fossil fuel industries in Canada. We don't need to buy into those arguments. Um, <laughs> second time around, it's off word. We've talked about democracy and we've talked about the environment and, I, and, and the economy a little bit. I do want to make a point that obviously this is all quite superficial and this is the launch of the campaign. You're going to see lots of me or have lots of opportunities. I want to hold lots of town hall-ish things while I'm campaigning. And then once I'm your MP in Ottawa, another place where um, Elizabeth has been an amazing mentor is her town halls. So I had the honor of attending one two weeks ago. It was an amazing experience. Um, the room was packed. There were hundreds of people there. I don't know how many hundreds, but it was a big room. And twice a year, Elizabeth goes to nine places in her riding and presents on the last sitting of Parliament. She talks about um, what happened in Parliament, what bills were brought, what, 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 what was the discussion, what was the outcome, and then she takes questions on all sorts of things. And so the people in her riding know what she's doing. They, she, she reports on what she has been doing. And, um, and I'm going to pledge to do the same thing. And. Uh, decisions and I think that we as a community are really diverse this riding I think wherever Pete is I'm not sure but um, it, one of the most ethically diverse ridings in Canada and Burnaby is oh not the riding the city of Burnaby and you know most of us have well my my family for example we immigrated here uh, three generations and four generations ago and we all bring something different. We all bring something new, and that's important in, in terms of having these conversations. But what's really important is the something old. The Aboriginal peoples who have belonged to this land for countless generations and have taken the stewardship of this land as a sacred responsibility. Those voices need to be part of the conversations that we have, and those voices need to be respected and heard and not just um, the traditional voices, the voices that have become integrated into our system, but we need to listen to the voices of the Klebona Keepers and the people at the Unistoten camp and the frontline defenders all across this country who are currently being basically abused and walked over and downstream of major projects. Um, they need our support and we as a government Already. <laughs> <laughs> we, we as a government should not be opposing these people. We should be, they're on our side. They're standing up for our environment. And I, this, not ours, not theirs, the, the, the environment that we all share. And we need to be listening and we need to be supporting. And so I also pledge to support not just in the formal channels of government that frustrate. Um, many of these people, but to continue as I leave activism and move into politics, to continue to support those frontline defenders.